Hey, Brandon. What's up, Jazz? Dude, so many comics came out this week. Are, are we getting ready to review them? We're gonna review them. So ready to review some comic books. Let's get to it. So I dared myself to read a Xenoscope book this week. Xenoscope is uh, known for kind of adapting old kid stories into adult ones, and I decided to check out Jungle Book number one. It's a movie that I loved as a child, and I wanted to see how they would adapt it into a comic. Um, they turned it into something completely different. I don't even know where they were running with it. Uh, Mowgli is a girl in this comic. I mean, obviously they love drawing women in Xenoscope books, um, so I can understand, sort of, um, but then they kind of added a whole new aspect of there's like five different children that were dropped on the island and they're all being raised by different sects of the animals in the, in the kingdom and it's just really weird. The art is great and I've, there's one thing I can always say about Xenoscope books is they look beautiful and I love seeing women in, in Xenoscope books but the story is just lacking so much. Um, I feel like if it was me that could take Jungle Book and run with it, I'd have a lot better to write, you know? And um, for that reason, I'm gonna give this two out of five Nerd Skulls. So the new Mark Miller book came out this week, Super Crooks number one. Uh, basically the story of a person that gets caught up, he's an old criminal and he's just trying to kind of make some money in his old age and he gets messed with some new super criminals and he kind of gets in some trouble. Um, what's interesting is they decide, the group, him and, him and his old group decide they're going to go to a, uh, a country where it is not overwhelmed with superheroes and they're going to pull the ultimate heist. Basically, it's a Law & Order meets Ocean's Eleven, uh, but in a really good way. I really liked this series, Lionel Francis Yu is on the art, which usually would kind of turn me off of it, but he does a good Super Crooks book. I, I want to read more of this. I'm going to give it four out of five Nerd Skulls. So Infinite Vacation number four came out this week, one of my favorite image titles, and it's a title I don't think enough people are talking about. It's a story about a time where we can travel to alternate dimensions and vacation as our alternate selves. But what if you found out that one of your alternate selves was a cannibalistic serial killer? What would you do then? I mean, this book is really incredible. Nick Spencer is really doing it with this, and uh, I feel like um, it's such a good story that it upsets me that, not, that too many people are not reading this. Um, I love the artwork, I love the interesting way they make you turn the book to get to the next page and uh, the interaction with live action shots, uh, really interesting storytelling in this book and you all should be reading it. There's only one more issue. Pick it up, I'm gonna give it five out of five Nerd Skulls. Hey there nerds, Jasmine here with my comic reviews for the week. I just got done reading Peanuts number three and it was adorable. I didn't even know there was a Peanuts comic so my heart melted as soon as I saw the cover because I love Peanuts and they can do no wrong. This is a great book. It had a ton of little stories in it about things Charlie Brown and his friends do. It was great. I loved it. Uh, Snoopy has thoughts in this one so you actually get a little Snoopy dialogue and I really like that because that never happens. Uh, I'm really excited. I'm going to keep reading this. Maybe Woodstock will pop up at some point. I'm going to give this four out of five Nerd Skulls. It was classic and adorable and I cherished it. I just finished Vertigo's new book, Voodoo Child Number 1. It was really hit or miss for me. The art really pulled me in. It's that sort of old, older 90s style. There's too many lines on people's faces. They're not exactly symmetrical. That stuff didn't bother me. I kind of got into it and I really enjoyed it. It's, this book is set in uh, Treme, New Orleans. So that was really cool. It's a lot of voodoo, obviously, it's in the name. Surrounding this one girl, Dominique, as she's running through the town. For me, there was just too much running going on in this book because there was a lot of talking and it was a lot of extra uhs and saying things twice that didn't need to be said twice so that sort of threw me off the dialogue wasn't all the way there for me and i didn't like that portion of it but as soon as dominique got done running to wherever she was going something really cool happened and then i was sucked right back in and that happened a couple times so i'm actually really excited to keep reading this comic um i'm gonna give it four out of five nerd skulls mainly because it really drew me in for number one i really thought the art was hit and miss and i really thought the dialogue was hit and miss but for some reason i just really liked it and i want to keep reading it Alrighty, I just finished reading Catwoman number seven. I love Catwoman. I'm a fangirl for Catwoman, especially this new ongoing from the new 52. I can only ask that Gillian March does the art again at some point. Uh, this comic, I love it. It's beautiful, it's well written, and it's a great Catwoman story of learning to sort of mature even as an adult and as a super criminal. And then this issue, at the end of it, she ends up running off with another super criminal, and you can only wonder if this, is gonna, if this is gonna be a good decision or a really bad decision. So I'm really excited to see what happens in issue eight. Something crazy happens in every issue, so I'm just excited to see who dies next or who she sleeps with next on the top of a roof. I'm really stoked, it's gonna be great. I'm gonna give this five out of five nerd skulls. Everything's awesome. 
Hey there guys, Cubby here with my comic reviews this week. I got to review Super Dino number 9 by Robert Kirkman and Jason Howard. And what a blast. This book is great for all ages. I don't know if I've told you this before, but it's really, really fun. About a kid with his pet dinosaur who's not really, it's not a pet. He's like a government agent that helps fight crime and other intergalactic threats with this little kid, which I don't know why the little kid's helping out. But hey, it's awesome and it's fun and it's great for all ages if you love great artwork great storytelling. This is definitely a book you should be picking up. This particular issue, I will give it a four out of five Nerd Skulls. Great artwork, great pacing, and it ends with a really big cliffhanger. Kind of gets you amped up for more. So stay tuned for that. All right, guys, I got to review No Place Like Home number two. I read the first one. Very interesting. A different modern take on The Wizard of Oz. Uh, this next one kind of gives, uh, gives a little more of that adult side. First one was a little more tame. This one, really amps up the violence, really amps up the gore. Um, not in an over, over, overt way, it's not gross, but it's there and it's terrifying and you kind of see the, the threat for what it is and this one guy in the first issue who you thought was crazy, you see that he actually wasn't and every, the, the truth starts to unfold. Uh, this issue, really, really good, um, way better than the first one, so I'm gonna give this one three and a half nerd skulls. All right guys, I got to read Justice League number seven, Again, Justice League has to be one of my favorite DC books right now. Uh, just out of the park with its storytelling, its artwork. Gene Haw comes on. Jim Lee is off for a couple issues, so Gene Haw came on to help out. I kind of wish it was still Jim Lee. It does give a different tone to the book and a different feel, which is definitely something that you kind of want in a big book like this. You don't want to get overwhelmed with one person just doing it over and over and over again. So it's nice to switch it up. The story, it, it's kind of amping up to... Uh, to, to some pretty crazy stuff. Uh, I, I really don't know what's going on yet, but it's really interesting and I cannot wait for, for what's to happen. But the bigger part of this issue was the backup with Shazam, where he's finally kind of revealed for the New 52. Whoa. Gary Frank artwork is ridiculous. His emotions, his face, everything that he carries through on the page is amazing. Uh, the story, it's short and it's sweet, but it leaves with a big cliffhanger that just makes me want this to be an entire issue, an entire trade that I have in my hands right now. I just want to keep reading, keep reading. I do want to do that with the Justice League as well, but this way overpowered it. So I'm going to give Justice League number seven by itself, the, the main Justice League story, I'm going to give that four out of five Nerd Skulls. The Shazam story, I'm going to give five out of five, even though it was eight pages, but it was eight pages of awesome. All right, guys, I got to read X Sanction number four of four, a conclusion to this nice little mini series that was going on, kind of amping up Avengers versus X Men. The funny thing is, at the end of this book, it doesn't really seem like the Avengers should be fighting the X Men. There's one thing that kind of raises an eyebrow, um, and it's visible on, 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 on the page, but um, I can't really see where that like, kind of escalates everything else. Uh, it does end with a really, really, really good, hopeful future. Um, I, I kind of like where they're going with, with Cable. I do not want to give anything away. Um, I will not say whether he lives or dies, but he, definitely something happens to him. Um, overall, eh, the, the storytelling was, was there. Just the, the wording, the, the dialogue was just a little weird. Um, Jeff Loeb, he's really hit or miss for me, and Ed McGuinness was really hidden on, hidden on all cylinders this, this issue, but overall I got to give it four out of five minute schools. I got a chance to read Star Wars Dawn of the Jedi number two. This second issue is actually what I was kind of looking forward to with the series. The first issue was a little weird to me, but this one you really get a lot more backstory on the different uh, characters. You're getting more introduction. You're already seeing a conflict start to uh, form, and I'm really enjoying this. Uh, I'm going to give this five out of five nerd skulls. All right, guys, Brandon here, and I got to read Batman number seven, and this book just gets more awesome every issue. I, 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 I sound repetitive every week just saying how awesome this book is, but each issue outdoes the last, and this one, Scott Snyder, I don't know how you even thought of this, but he takes just a part of Batman and just turns it upside down, something that is just a staple of the character and it turns out it's been something else this whole time and nobody's realized it. I am, I'm blown away. I'm absolutely blown away by this book. If you're not reading it, just come on, get on it. I'm giving this five out of five nerd skulls. 
All right, that is all the comic book reviews we have for you this week. But until next week, be sure to check us out on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, and NerdLocker.com for all your nerdy news. My name's Brandon. And I'm Jasmine. And we'll see you next week for even more comic books.